Um, thank you for having me today. Uh, my name is Jeff Crave. I've uh, been an athletic trainer with Rebound for 10 years. And we have currently four physical therapy clinics. Our original site in Salmon Creek, a Pacific Crest location, which is the location I'm at, off Mill Plain of Lake Oswego, and here at the Rose Garden. And fortunately for me, I get to work at, um, I'm sorry, there's no disclosures or interest, at our physical therapy location in Pacific Crest. We have an 8,000 square foot uh, facility, turfed, that has a pull-out net for throwing, hitting, golfing, name, you name the sport. So of course, I love to spend my time here. I do cover a local high school, but it's kind of a um, more of event coverage. So I get to work with the majority of the athletes um, and primarily the throwers that come through the rebound system. I wanted to put out a few of the risk factors of baseball and the throwing motion. Um, I apologize, I had a slide that uh, somehow I deleted that showed the that baseball, throwing a baseball itself, is the highest recorded motion in sport. It is 7,500 degrees per second from maximum external rotation to that ball release. So that's the internal um, speed through each one of those throws. And this is why we have a lot of baseball athletes. If you want to know how fast that is, if you were to take 7,500 degrees per second and in one second, the arm would revolution 28 times in a row. That's how stressful that is to the, to the throwing motion and to the shoulder. These are the risk factors that we talk to the parents about, the athletes, and the coaches. Um, as you can see, our number one risk factor for elbow injuries in our youth is playing that one sport year round, the specialization that kids are going to these days for one sport. They play in the spring through the summer, they may play multiple teams, then they go into the fall, and in the Northwest, even though we don't have the ability to go outdoors and play, we have these now these brand new facilities locally in Portland. You have the Pace, uh, Portland Baseball Club in Vancouver. We have Northwest Futures, and they have indoor facilities now that these kids can play at. So they are never giving their shoulder a break. I mean that and the elbow it is year round. Um, everybody, every parent thinks their kid's going to be the next D1 signing, which is very rare that we see in our in our area. And it's just it's a shame because I believe that if we could educate a little bit more. And, this, and, the, and the numbers and data has been out there for years. I and mean, we started in the late 90s doing research on this stuff. Um, I really feel like we can make a dent in this if we can continue to educate everybody involved. Uh, pitchers who compete eight months out of the year, five times more likely to suffer. So we want a four month break. Two to three is probably more realistic. Uh, we really encourage multi -sport sports. We don't want them to specialize in one sport. Um, so encouraging other, if they don't want a team sport, we can talk through like, you know, an individual sport like a golf, you know, tennis, any of those other uh, recreational sports. Uh, pitchers who pitch more than 100 innings in a calendar year were 3.5 times more likely. I can tell you that 10 years ago, the number was your age times 10. So if you were a 14 year old, we suggested 140 innings is your max for a calendar year. You can see, that number's come down way down to even like 100. And these kids are playing upwards of, just on one club team, 70 to 80 games in a short period of time. So with all the emphasis on winning and getting exposure and not having a ton of just pitchers, you're gonna get ton, you're, that number's, they're gonna be way over that 100 number. But um, this info is out there, um, we're just not using it. Um, there's the four month mark. According to Yang and all the pitchers who pitched on consecutive days had 24.5 times greater risk. The ASMI found the amateurs who played catcher while not pitching were 2.7 higher risk, suffer arm injuries, so we definitely discourage a pitcher-catcher combo. So from a young age, we try to get them to choose. Are you going to be a pitcher or a catcher? <clears throat> There's the multiple teams. Uh, curveballs and sliders, we do. Um, try to advise to stay away from it, but it's more about the repetition. It's, it's okay to throw these pitches properly with good form and mechanics. It's the, the amount they're throwing. I'm gonna to talk to you and show you some videos of what I do in the clinic and kind of 
introduce to you some of the major flaws that we see in the throwing motion. And all this stuff is backed up from um, the ASMI and all the research. Dr. Fleissig, who's with Dr. Andrew's group, has done, he's kind of the lead research guru in this stuff. Um, I've been attending some of his courses um, all the way back in the mid-2000s, and all his stuff is published. So um, I can't really take credit for any of this, but this is the kind of stuff that, that I'm looking at from the throwing piece. <clears throat> so in our clinic, this is a, a video of a picture we had. Um, all I use is, a, is an iPhone or an iPad, and I use an app where I can slow down and draw lines. So you're going to see here, I'm going to stop it when his foot makes contact with the ground. And this is where I talk through the athletes and the parents of like, where in the lead foot contact position do we, does our shoulder and elbow need to be? Where does our trunk need to be? Where the research shows that we're at a higher risk. So right here, I'm lead, showing him the lead foot and the acceleration phase through to ball release. And then we'll stop at ball release, or I'm sorry, just prior to ball release and measure different angles. I'm looking at maximum shoulder extra rotation. We know in baseball that you have to have near 180 degrees of dynamic external rotation, but that also is what causes more injury. So we can kind of slow down video, take measurements with the tools we use. Um, I'm showing a trunk angle with him right here. He's too far behind his front foot. He needs to get his head out in front more, and that's going to allow him to use his lower half more. This is a, one of our younger youth athletes. Um, with that same app, I can do a side-by-side -side and a front, and I can sync them together and take them through and show them. This stuff is like, you know, they light up this stuff, especially the parents. They're just looking at like, whoa, this stuff is really cool. We can actually see it, and the kid can understand. You can tell a kid what to do and, and what not to do, but to, to give them that visual feedback is, the, is a huge piece, and I love to use it. So I'm showing on the left side his leg angle, how he has a, almost like a valgus position and his foot angle. And on the right side, showing how he's upright in his throwing position. There's that trunk angle line again. And that back foot, you can see, is in contact with the ground. That means he's leaving all that energy on the lower half. So what I'm cueing him to do is to pick up that back leg to automatically move the trunk forward towards the target. And then on the other side, we're talking, I'm looking at arm slot. If you saw the box I was drawing, I'll show you later on some of the technology we're using with arm slot. Um, that box was just to show the athlete where the ideal position is we want his arm when he releases the ball. This is an example of uh, one of the flaws I showed you, the four flaws we look for. It's called the inverted W. Actually, ESPN Magazine back in 2012 put out an awesome article that was where we saw this rise in Tommy John surgeries. And it said, well, what, what is it about this? That, what, what are we missing? And we, we took a look at the mechanics of all these pitchers um, and found that when their front foot made contact with the ground, they were in this what we call the inverted W position. So what happens in this position is when that front foot hits the ground, and then you have to go through this massive rotation through the shoulder and the elbow, all the torque is going straight to the elbow. And it's equal to a 40-pound dumbbell hanging off the back of your, back of your hand. And that's what they've been able to measure in the labs. So this inverted W, what I'm cueing the guys to do is when their front foot hits the ground, they get their arm up. Shoulder, elbows up to 90-90. Um, I'm not so key, like, specific on range of motion there. I just want to cue them that their arm is up above uh, that plane, that shoulder plane, and not down. Elbow drop, <coughs> we see this in both uh, shoulder and elbow injuries with the shoulder. When they come through, they're kind of taking that humeral head and just kind of, you know, just grinding it on the rim and they're doing it over and over again. So the healthiest position for the shoulder to be in is neutral. So we want them in that neutral position so now when you're going through that internal external rotation, you don't have a lot of that, um, that grind that you're seeing. Um, and for the elbow, too, is the, is the valgus, the stress that comes through when you drop your elbow. <clears throat> this is one of the sleeves I'm using in the clinic. It's called the Modus sleeve. It's, um, the app is called Modus Throw. It's a free app. And right now, this is being used right at the top level in major leagues because they can afford to do it. But 
Um, they published a great article. It wasn't just about selling their device. It was about you know, keeping these arms healthy. And they were able to come up with the results of three mechanical flaws that cause increased stress to the elbow. Arm slot, so where the ball is released, this is the arm slot. Arm speed, so the RPMs, and then that arm rotation, that maximum extra rotation I was referring to. So those three combined um, have found a significant relationship with that elbow varus torque, trying to prevent that valgus stress, the UCL does. There's one newton meter increase in elbow varus torque was associated with 13 degrees in the arm slot. So if they're a three-quarter thrower, 13 degrees less cause one newton meter increase in, in force at the elbow. Okay. Um, the rotation, 116 degrees increase in arm speed. The arm speeds are up about 1,000. And eight, in, uh, excuse me, eight degree increase in arm rotation. So the more external rotation, the more force. This is what the sleeve looks like. It's got a little accelerometer built in. I have an iPad hooked up to it. It gives me instant data, so live on the screen every throw. The example here is a kid is throwing a three-quarter. You can see arm slot number is 42 degrees. And what I had him do, I said drop down to a sidearm, and you can see his arm slot went down to 15, and the flag came up, a red flag. So this app gives us live data on how many stressful throws. These three numbers combined What's that number that we're getting that's stressing them? This is a great resource for your, your patients and your families. It's pitchsmart.org. You can go on here and find all the pitching guidelines. You've got those risk factors I showed you. There's a lot more than those at the, um, on this website. And you can find um, things like the days of rest in between throwing and pitch count. Like this is an example. If you look on the left column, it's an age. So a, 11 to 12 year old who threw 50 pitches in a game should require two days of rest. So it's just a lot of information out there that we're not using. So what I'm trying to do is educate these families, the coaches, the parents, and all the providers on we've got to use the data that's there so we can help limit these injuries. And as much as I love working with baseball players, I'd rather see them on the field than in the clinic. Thank you for your time.